Hey, good morning, everyone. It's Pastor Bramick at Holy Shepherd Lutheran Church. Today is Wednesday. It's October the 3rd. It's time for our daily devotion. Um, today, we're going to be looking at the connections between Psalm 3 and the first two Psalms. So, uh, as we said from the beginning of our study, Psalm 1 and 2 serve as the introduction to the rest of the Psalter. And Psalm 3 really, in, in some ways, is the very first Psalm. Uh, it's the first psalm with a superscription. It gives reference to David fleeing Absalom, so it gives us some good historical context. It very concretely links itself with an author. We know David wrote Psalm 2 from what's said uh, elsewhere in the New Testament, uh, specifically the book of Acts. It makes reference to David writing Psalm 2. And so some people also think he wrote Psalm 1, and now we know he wrote Psalm 3. So, uh, and Psalm 4 as well. So, especially the first two books of, of the five of the Psalms are attributed uh, largely to David. Uh, but the Psalm ends on a note of, uh, of deliverance. And uh, let's see. Uh, but in the middle of the Psalm, when David makes his petition, he says, To the Lord I cry aloud, and he answers me from his holy hill. Now, the, the phrase holy hill is, is thought to be Jerusalem, where God was dwelling in the tabernacle at the time. And uh, we, we have this also referenced in, in Psalm 2, because this is where uh, God installs his king. Psalm 2, verse 6 says, I have installed my king on Zion, my holy hill. So, you know, as we said in the study this past Sunday, it may be true that while David has left Jerusalem in flight, uh, God has not. God is still in Jerusalem. He is still in his holy hill, on his holy hill, and that is the place from which David will expect an answer. Because David knows that he is the rightfully called and anointed Davidic king, that God uh, anointed him through the prophet Samuel, that God called him and chose him. Absalom is not chosen by God. Absalom is trying to secure the throne on his own. He is staging a coup. So to rebel against God's divinely installed king is to rebel against God. Even if David is not always doing such a great job as king or as leader, I mean, I know we look back on him with a, a romanticized sense of, of him being the greatest king in Israel ever, which of course he was, but that doesn't mean he didn't make mistakes and that doesn't mean he didn't make ma mistakes outside of Bathsheba, right? So uh, Absalom is, is illegitimate in his claim to try and seize the throne, and he is actually opposing God and making himself an enemy of God by doing so. So by that respect, David sees him as an enemy and, uh, and regards him as such. And, and that's how David begins the psalm, regarding his son as his own enemy. O Lord, how many are my foes, David says. You know, so... Uh, you know, and then later in verse 7, strike all my enemies on the jaw, break the teeth of the wicked. You know, this would include his son because his son is, is openly opposing God and trying to destroy God's plan with Israel and, uh, you know, assaulting God's Davidic king. So Absalom has put himself on the wrong side uh, of the faith by doing this. Uh, we can transfer this or we can apply this to, to Jesus' time by thinking of the religious leaders and how they also sought to destroy God's plan, even though they were the ones who should have been upholding God's plan and who were called to um, be faithful to God. And, and yet they oppose Jesus and then Jesus goes on and, and he suffers death at their hands but prays for them. Uh, we know that God does forgive his enemies, that through repentance and faith, uh, a turning away from false religion and, and pride, and by coming to faith in, in Jesus Christ and, and his sinlessness and benefits and forgiveness, that um, such gifts are ours for eternity. All right, let's continue now as we pray the Lord's Prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift his countenance upon you and give you his peace. Amen. All right, uh, announcements for today. So email newsletter is going to be coming out in just a little bit. Psalm 3 is already uploaded to the YouTube channel, but you'll find a link in the email newsletter as well. Uh, thank you to everyone who helped out with the garage sale this past Sunday. I'm sorry, Saturday. Um, we do, I believe, still have some leftover boxes. I need to go check, uh, but they are on the north side of the property along the fence line uh, of the trash uh, area. So feel free to come up and help yourself. And uh, this Saturday, we do have men's breakfast that's happening at 9 a.m. I'm sorry, at 8 a.m. with elders meeting to follow. And... Uh, uh, let's see, what else can I tell you? Uh, there'll be some announcements in the email newsletter as well as in the bulletin this Sunday about our upcoming fall festival, so you don't want to miss that. It's a fundraiser for our preschool. Uh, they're looking to get a new laminator, uh, and we would love to be able to, to support them in this endeavor, so please uh, please plan to, to come and to attend. All right, that's all the announcements I have for today. God bless you. Thank you for watching. And um, I will see you again tomorrow for more daily devotions.